Welcome everybody for coming to South Arm United Church Worship. This is the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany. We acknowledge that we are located on the traditional indigenous territory of Coast Salish peoples and that we are guests in this land. Come, let us worship God. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. Baptized and freed, grounded in love, let us worship God. Let us pray. God of life, in Christ you resurrect all things. Raise us from death to life, that our transformation may bear witness to the power of your grace in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Let us say this offertory prayer together. Holy One, bless and multiply these gifts we give as tokens of our trust in you. Use them to bless the poor, feed the hungry, and comfort those who weep. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture reading Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do they prosper. The wicked are not so but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Listen to the word of God. Thanks be to God. Scripture reading Luke, chapter five, verses one to 11. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, 
for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. Listen for God's good news. Thanks be to God. I look forward to coming back to church and do in-person worship. And that's what we plan to do for next Sunday, February 20th. Of course, we're still waiting for Dr. Bonnie to make the next update in the middle of the week. So watch your electronic mailbox and see whether it is confirmed that we are indeed offering worship on this coming Sunday. I hope. And just like last year, it takes some time to get the momentum going, but I'm confident that just like last year, that it's a matter of time, a month or so, that things are kind of getting uh, back to normal and we get used to it and we feel that it is doable. So it is my hope that for next Sunday, we'll come back to worship. Stay tuned. I'm not turning a blind eye to what is going on in many parts of the world, including our Canadian cities. Note, how can I? It is hard to watch, and I'm not making a comparison to the folks who lived in the first century where our story came. There is no justice to make such a comparison. For those folks, the empire life didn't seem to end any time in their lifetime. In fact, it never had ended in their lifetime, and nobody cared. Still, let me say, violence, intimidation, killing, and coercion were all that they knew and experienced. Well, you may ask, what has changed? I know, I know, I hear you. We have much to do in our own time. It is a shock for us to see the democratic system and ideals that we have been building for so long is so fragile. This Sunday, we have this story where Jesus went up to mountains, prayed, healed the sick, and bestowed blessings to the poor, the hungry, people who weep. What do you think this text is asking us to do? This story is the beatitude in the Gospel of Luke, compared to what we read in Matthew, where we read how God blessed those people who are hungry, meek, and humble. By reading a text such as this, we generally have an impression that God stands with the poor and the hungry, but not so much with the rich, especially in our theological tradition where we work toward justice, fairness, and equality. It is relatively easy to think that God is condemning the rich and does not want us to get rich. But let me tell you, God loves everybody. If you are a rich person, Please come to South Arm United Church. We love you. Seriously, come to us. We love rich people. And at this day and age, we really have to think about who are the rich. 
I know when I was young, I would not think that I am rich because I really was not. But now, you know, everybody received, you know, their, their assessment of their properties. Everybody kind of, boo, is that that much? It's really seriously think about who are the rich and who are the poor. I think this is not the text to tell us to turn the rich away. Quite the contrary. When taken in the first century context, it functions like a warning text. The idea is that the rich, upon hearing such messages, will be inspired to join us in showing kindness and sharing resources. Of course, some will say, well, good luck. But still, that is the invitation. The writer had a desire. Once the rich, the powerful, knew how God blessed these people who are less fortunate or even suffering in the hand of the unjust system, they would change course. The text doesn't glorify being poor or hungry. If nothing is changed, make sure that we know God will love them and welcome them. Even though the text sounds harsh, as if the blessed and the foes are occupying two opposite ends of a spectrum. But in Luke's world, this story serves as an invitation for the rich and powerful to join the holy movement where God wants to bless us all. If we return to the first century, when people were being devastated by empire rule, there was a time people longed for liberation, inspired by the story of Moses leading God's people away from cruelty. Luke in this story portrays Jesus who was praying on the mountain, resembling how Moses went up to Mount Sinai to meet God. Anytime a key religious leader went up to a high mountain, significant event occurred. That is how Luke wanted his audience to feel when they heard Jesus went up to the mountain, followed by healing the sick and proclaimed God's realm of mercy and blessing. This is what restoring the world means. This is what God wants us to work towards. Of course, the poor and the hungry occupy a significant place in God's economy. We need to understand that Jesus' immediate followers were mostly poor, had little to show, and were despised by the better off. The first audience of this story was the grassroots, the poor. To us, faith in Jesus needs to keep his prophetic voice alive by resisting the temptation to reduce faith to merely a spiritual jacuzzi or personal vitamin pill. Even though it is important for people of faith to cultivate personal piety, the Jewish tradition has a long history of being the voice of the voiceless and critiquing social injustices. Amos was such a prophet. If Christianity's only message is confined to the personal moral realm, have we not condoned social injustice? And are we not blind by the discriminatory system that we are part of? For a long time, a colonial Christianity was complicit in the unjust system that favors only the wealthy and powerful. Upon hearing this text, we need to be challenged. Can we afford to sing praises to God such as all are welcome and do nothing to examine the system we feel comfortable living in? Having said all that, I think it is increasingly 
economically challenging to live in big city like Vancouver with high cost of living. It is difficult for many of us, including the younger generation, to pay for education and to find decent housing. I don't know if it is realistic or not, but at least upon hearing this text, knowing what God desires, knowing how God blesses, let me say, don't just strive to be rich. Strive to be compassionate. Learn to share and care about others. We are all in this together. I pray that God will give us wisdom, courage, and passion to examine our lives, our city, and the way things are going, and to be creative in finding ways to welcome all people, to help people who are in need, make us useful in this time. Amen. Holy One, you have created us with the ability between life and death, blessings and curses. Help us to reject the advice of the wicked or sit with the scoffers and by your grace, empower us to put our trust in you. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who put their trust in themselves instead of in you. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who are poor, who hunger, who weep. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who are making poor choices in their lives. May they turn to you for guidance. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for the trees, for the rivers and streams, and for all your creation. Turn us from our exploitative ways to help you renew the earth. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. God, you demand much, but promise that your yoke is easy. Guide us throughout our lives, keeping us ever mindful of the good news of your forgiving and renewing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. be like trees planted by water could yield your fruit in this season 
watched over and protected by God. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.